I just want to say you should be looking at the next Yeah, one. I was wondering, <laughs> where should I look? Yeah, uh, that's just to give us a sense of, you know, mirroring, but you shouldn't be looking there, you should be looking at the lens. Yeah. This, uh, this is where the people are. Okay. This is the people. So yeah. even when you're doing this and seeing this, I should still yeah. directly look yeah. at the lens? Yeah, so look at the lens and if there's an indication that light coming there should actually be making you to say, okay, look at the lens, just think about it that way. You see that white light doing that? I don't see no white light. No, you don't see? Where? You don't see light shining through the blinking. Ah, no, I see it when I come here, but yeah, I can't see it from here. Okay. Okay. All right, so, um, all right, so we'll start again. Hello and Happy New Year. Today, I'm going to be making a comparison between two premium headphones. On one hand, is the Boas and Wakens PX7, which going forward, I'll be referring to as simply PX7. And on the other hand, is Apple's AirPods Max, which going forward, I'll be referring to as AirPods maybe. Just in case you're watching this channel for the first time, I just want to explain that I'm a visual artist working with and across a lot of medium. I'm a photographer, a writer, a filmmaker, a DJ. I also produce music and podcast. And here I discuss and review devices that I use for my creative slash artistic workflow. I've owned and used the Boas and Wakens for a little over a year while I only got the AirPods Max a few days ago. However, I've been heavily using it for the past three days. By the way, I made a comparison of the PX7 with Sony 1000XM4, which you can find up on the screen somewhere here. Now, it might seem that this is an unfair comparison given that there are many reasons why these headphones differ. But I decided to make this comparison mainly for three reasons. One is that it could be said that both of these headphones fit into what I would call the consumer premium headphones category. Secondly, their price difference. One of the loudest buzz about AirPods Max is that Apple set the price at 550 US dollars or almost 600 euro if you are in Germany or in Europe. Many people found that very expensive, including myself, I must say, especially compared to Sony XM4s that now go for less than half the price after discount. On the other hand, the price of the PX7 on release date was 400 euro. However, today you could even find it for as low as 280 euro brand new. Then thirdly is the sound. The English company Boas & Wilkins has been at the forefront of audio engineering for over 50 years. Their name and brand is synonymous with excellence in sound quality. So when they started to make headphones and earbuds, by the way, they brought all of that excellence on board. While this review is not an attempt to rehash the issue of the steep price of the AirPods Max, it goes without saying that the conclusion we are hoping for at the end of this video will be which one of these headphones is a better value for money. The answer to that may not be as straightforward as you might think. So let's dive in. And which one would you want to start with? The, which, which headphones do you, would you like to start with? Uh, this one's on the right. Yeah, Boas and Wilkins. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll put it on. When it comes to design, the makers of these headphones clearly prioritize aesthetics. That is to say, they aimed to make their product a lifestyle slash fashion statement. While the form of both headphones share some similarities, they differ in many ways. The PX7 sports a retro design that screams class and elegance, almost as if it has envisaged its own aging and wants to do so gracefully. The headband is made out of carbon fiber, complete with a cloth finish. The ear cups are also covered in cloth, while the logo engraving is of metal. The control buttons are made of plastic. The ear cups are large enough to fit the ears. Now, when it comes to headphone design and manufacturing, the choice of material is largely informed by the intention to keep things lightweight, comfortable, durable, and finally portable. The PX7 checks the box for all of the above mentioned qualities, well, almost. While the PX7 is lightweight, it is not the most comfortable to wear for long hours due to the clamping force on the head. It also has a bulky profile on the head and this bulkiness translates to portability and I will come back to this point later in the video. The AirPod Max is on a whole other level. As soon as you unpack the headphones, you are greeted with the shiny metallic ear cups that are cold to the touch. The headband is made of stainless steel coated in soft rubber. It is a telescopic arm that allows for a smooth adjustment of the headband 
and keeping it at where you set them for a consistent fit. Spanning the headband is a canopy made from a neat mesh material. At this point, I must stop to say that the AirPods Max weighs a whooping 385 grams compared to 310 grams from Boaz and Wilkins PX7. Yet, AirPods Max feel more comfortable and lightweight on the head than the PS7. So how did Apple achieve this contradiction? Well, Apple being Apple draws our attention to the fact that it is one thing for something to be heavy, but there's also the science of weight distribution to consider. The neat mesh on the headband does wonders in distributing the weight of the headphones evenly to reduce on head pressure. Apple continues with the mesh material for the ear cushion of the ear cups. Apple says it is intended to provide a pillow-like softness while listening to music. Well, if you ask me, it really does. But it also does a great job in sealing the ears, thanks to the acoustically engineered memory foam. The ear cushions are detachable and changeable, and Apple sells replacement ear cup cushions for about $79, very expensive. The design of the AirPods Max leans heavily towards minimalism. There are only two protrusions on the ear cups. On the right ear cup, we have a button for toggling between noise cancellation and transparency mode, as well as activate the voice assistant, in this case, Siri. Apple has carried over the digital crown from the Apple Watch to the AirPods Max. This now acts as a volume control knob. When pressed, it plays and pauses your audio or answer and reject phone calls. The AirPods Max comes in variations of five colors, silver, blue, green, and space gray, which is the one I'm reviewing here. Apple went all out to make these headphones look and feel not just premium, but luxurious. It is beautiful to hold and behold, and they are also solidly built. Boaz and Wilkins was going for a vintage laid back look while Apple went for a more futuristic laser cut feel. Now, talking about comfort, the design of these headphones translate into comfort when they are put on. The PS7s are quite comfortable and feels light on the head, especially now that we are comparing them to the AirPods. I have already said that the ear cups are wide enough to allow for good sealing while preventing the ears from heating up during extensive wearing. However, the clamp force can feel too tight after a long period of wearing, say for after two hours and above. The AirPods Max feel very comfortable considering its weight. Ear cups are equally wide, so the ear cushions do not touch your ears. I have worn the AirPods for about four hours at a stretch. The only time I felt uncomfortable was when I was wearing my glasses. About an hour in, I started feeling a sharp pain at my temple. Besides that, it is super comfortable. Now, features. These headphones are packed with features that firmly place them in the smart headphones category. They both have automatic noise cancellation as well as transparency mode. AirPods Max also mimics the Sony XM4 and PX7 with the ear cups lifting feature. So lift one ear cup to pause the music. The noise cancellation of the PX7 features three modes, low, high, and auto. You can assess them with the buttons on the right ear cup. The ambient mode button can be found on the left ear cup. The PS7 comes with a mobile app. The pairing of the headphone happens through this app. The app also helps in customizing the ANC and ambient mode. Firmware update is equally done through this mobile app. That's more or less what the app does. There is no customizable EQ as in the case of Sony XM4s, for instance. The AirPods Max are built and tailored for Apple ecosystem. Besides ANC and transparency mode, it also has adaptive EQ. Also, it has what Apple calls spatial audio. This feature brings surround sound and 3D audio to the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. It also features automatic switching across all Apple devices sharing the same iCloud account. That is, by the way, one of my favorite features of the AirPods. The AirPods Max pairs automatically if you are using Apple devices. The customization portal is built into the Apple operating system. As for Android users, things follow the traditional route of pairing the headphones via Bluetooth. Now, speaking of Android users, there are many of the mentioned features of the AirPods Max that will work, but not enough to justify the high price of these headphones. So in my opinion, if you are an Android user, you should be tilting towards Boaz and Wilkins PX7 in this case. Also, something that I find very strange is that for every time I bring it up, this thing knocks together. Imagine that it keeps knocking together like this all the time. For 
Imagine one year from today, and every time that I bring this out and I use it, mm -hmm. I want to put it back on the nose like There will be signs here of where, yeah. of the fact that from on the two sides. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know how how much you know this is tough. How how tough this is. Now, what sets the AirPods apart in its time and age is Apple's foray into computational audio. Both earcups are equipped with Apple's H1 chip with 10 audio cores. This chip handles all the operations mentioned, from seamless connection to noise cancellation and transparency mode. Now, the Boas and Wilkins tend to be economical with smart gimmicks, although it has adaptive noise cancellation as well as support a more extensive number of Bluetooth codecs than Apple. The battery life of the AirPods Max is pegged at 20 hours, while that of the PS7 is 30 hours. I find that both live up to these numbers quite well. So, how do all these features perform across both headphones? Let's find out. I have to put it on, right? Uh, you don't have to put it on again, that's it. It doesn't have an on off button. Okay. <laughs> now, let me switch on the, uh, the ANC. Now, and see what happens. Oh, you can do it yourself. Here, you press that button just lightly. Oof. She's gone. She's gone to another planet right now. She can't hear me anymore. It's like, is that me? See, she's gone. Off, off she goes. The noise cancellation of the Boas and Wilkins has always been subpar and awful, to say the least. The best mode for listening to the PS7 is in passive noise cancellation. Not only does the ANC not sufficiently block out noise, it also affects the sound quality when turned on. As for the AirPods Max, I think the best way to put it is that its automatic noise cancellation gives the Sony 1000XM4 a run for its money, and that's a huge compliment. However, where the AirPods Max shine is in the transparency mode. It is indeed unprecedented. I'm yet to use any headphone that even comes close to the naturalness of the ambient mode of AirPods Max. Not even its older, older little sibling, the AirPods Pro. If you are in the Apple ecosystem, you will find that the AirPods Max brings the advantage of convenience. This should not be taken lightly at all. It means a lot. For instance, it is so frustrating that the only way to connect my devices with the PS7 is through the app, which does not always work. Also, I wear glasses as you can see. The ceiling and the sound of the PS7 is affected when the headphone is worn over the thick handles of my glasses. So to mitigate this problem, I always have to hook the handles of my glasses above the ear cups. But this is in no way comfortable. Whereas with the AirPods Max, the adaptive EQ adjusts for my glasses such that I do not notice any change in sound when I have my glasses on. I prefer the digital crown knob on the AirPods Max to the plastic buttons of the PX7. Also, the buttons of the AirPods Max is consistent and feels good to the touch. This adds to the factor of convenience, which is one of the greatest strengths of the AirPods Max. The PS7 comes in a hard case for protection, but also it feels more rugged than the AirPods Max. On the other hand, the AirPods Max comes with a wallet, not a case. One cannot rely on this wallet to protect the headphones which I find somewhat ironic. Uh, this headphone was built to feel and look premium, yet Apple couldn't provide a proper protective case for it. Well, I hope that third-party companies will come up with something and fill the gap. There are already a few designs floating around on the internet. Now, let's talk about sound, which I think everyone has been waiting for. First, the listening experience I don't think it was such a fair fight because I listened to almost the entire song with this one. Yeah. <laughs> but it felt so good. It was really amazing um, because the song I was listening to has so many different components to it. Like that, there's the vocals, the instruments, there are these um, sounds of nature, like birds and at some point some cows even. Mm -hmm. So it was like I could listen to every single element of the piece of music mm -hmm. almost equally. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this one, I, it was more of like the, the bass was quite pronounced mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then, yeah, I, 
at some point when you put the cancellation on uh -huh. i got completely immersed uh -huh. like so lost in the music it was so amazing i've been listening to eminem's music to be modeled by with the airpods max it sounded all new and enjoyable i'm able to feel for the first time what eminem tries to do with the bass foundation in most of his songs until now i've always thought it was rowdy and don't compliment his equally sprawled out manner of rapping. But with the Airpods Max, I could feel the nuances and how his voice powerfully complements all of that. But you really feel the pristine interpretation of frequencies and almost perfect sound separation when you take the Airpods Max to jazz, for instance. I listened to a few songs from Miles Davis and Coltrane and I was completely immersed in the walls of your trumpets and cellos and all of that. I listen to the Airpods Mass across different streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, which is, by the way, the worst in terms of sound quality. And then Tidal Hi-Fi. They all sounded excellent, detailed, and well-balanced. The Adaptive EQ does a really good job at upscaling and shaping the frequencies of the sound. This is what Apple means when they say the Airpods Mass gives you a hi-fi sound. It's all in the H1 chip and the computational audio. Special audio with Airpods Max is really impressive and so is listening to audio from say YouTube or Netflix. Now for the Boas and Wilkins PX7. First, I must say that if you want to get the best out of PX7s in terms of sound quality, listen to high resolution audio files like Tidal's MQA files because they are not big on computational photography so don't rely on them for your low res files or use Spotify's. I'm referring to you. However, what the PS7 has got going is a wide soundstage. This is the biggest selling point for these cans. As a matter of fact, they are equipped with 43.6mm drivers as opposed to 40mm on the AirPods Max and Sony 1000XM4. These drivers are further placed at an angle to literally shoot the sound into your eardrums. As a result, what you get is an impression of a large soundstage. Also, the sound feels richer and more sculpted. The sound signature of the PS7 is on the warm and dark side, so the mid bars is quite boosted, but also the high frequencies are, are somewhat sweetened and sometimes can be fatiguing, especially at high volumes. The mid bars boost of the PS7 could sometimes bleed into the mid frequencies, thereby flattening the nuances between vocals and instruments, but it's not as bad as the Sony 1000 XM4, which in my opinion is the king of bass muddiness. This is where the Airpods Max does better as it puts emphasis more on the sub bass. So there is almost zero bleed into the mid frequencies. And this for me is a game changer. I mean, I'm a bass head, but not when it's messing up the entire song. The timing and balance of the PS7 is not as accurate as the Airpods Max. Of course, that's because the PS7 is tuned for one sound signature and has no adaptive EQ whatsoever. In my opinion, this has slowly pushed the PX7 out of the limelight and more into a niche consumer headphone. Nevertheless, when it works, it really sounds good and even better than the AirPods Max. Yeah, that's true. Again, that's due to the wide sound stage and fuller yet crispy sound. Now, phone call quality. I hardly use my PS7 for phone calls. I always defer to my AirPods Pro for that purpose. However, since I got the AirPods Max, I've been enjoying using it for phone calls. I have been told that I come across quite clear. The AirPods Max also does a good job at blocking off ambient noise during calls. And this is because Apple invested heavily in the microphone technology. There are six outward facing microphones to pick up ambient sounds from your environment and then two inward facing microphones to measure what you are hearing. Additionally, Beam forming microphones helps to isolate your voice during phone calls so that you are heard clearly even in windy situations. I tested this while I was on a bike and the person on the other end of the call thought I was stationary. With the Boas and Wakens, people always know when there is wind and it's awful. So that's about it. Now, here's my conclusion. Um, she, she loves it. She will want to have it because of the aesthetics. Because of the sound as well, no? Yeah, the sound was really good. Because of the sound as well. But when it now comes to that reality check, 
mm -hmm. <laughs> of money. It is real. That is a real thing in yeah. our everyday life. It, it is only in the movies that money don't count. It's only in the movies, fiction. But in real life, money counts. <laughs> money is oftentimes the primary um, factor you, you, you think of when you're making a decision for anything. Cool. And man, this is expensive for so many people. The Airpods Mass is almost a no-brainer if you are in the Apple ecosystem. That is, if you own other Apple devices for your daily lifestyle and workflow. If you love over-ear headphones and can afford the Airpods Max, I will say, go for it. Even if you can't afford it, save up for it over time. It brings the benefit of good, enjoyable sound across all genres and streaming platforms. But it is also very convenient. Don't underestimate this because it comes in really handy when you're using it in the everyday. If you are an Android user, you are better off with the PX7 or the Sony XM4s. If expansive soundstage and bass is important to you, then PX7 will give you more of that than the AirPods Max. If you wear glasses like me, the AirPods Max works perfectly for you. If you love solidly built headphones, but also one that looks and feels luxurious, then it's the AirPods Max. Now, when it comes to sound, I think it's up for grabs between the AirPods Max and the PX7. You can't go wrong with any of them. It all depends on your preference. Speaking of preference, I'll be keeping my AirPods Max. I see it fitting perfectly into my workflow and together with the AirPods Pro, my everyday listening device is complete while knowing that they work seamlessly across my ecosystem. So that's it from me. If you found this video enjoyable or informative, please consider liking it. You'll be helping the channel to grow. Also, consider subscribing. Let us become a community and grow this channel together. Leave any comment you may have about this video in the comment section and I will suddenly attend to it. To my community of subscribers, I want to say thank you so much for your support so far. I wish you all a healthy and fulfilling 2021. See you in the comment section below or in the next video. Have a beautiful day. Share. Want to see Yambo <laughs> again? Leave uh, <laughs> leave a comment if you like her smile. Oh my god! If you like your own smile. <laughs> if you want to see her in the channel often, you know, leave a comment on the comment section and. Um, depending on um, how many people commented and say we want her back, you know, so so like take a poll, we'll bring it all together. I'll, I'll carry all of it to her and say, look, this this person is asking for you to come back to the channel, so we're gonna see her often, and we're gonna review things. So uh, she's not so interested in tech, so um, I'm thinking that if she joins the channel, then we might just branch off with reviewing other things like cakes, like food, mm. like. Um, like what it feels like to jump into the lake uh, when it's zero degrees in Berlin and things like that. These are the kind of, you know, she is on that side of things. She's a leftist, uh, pure leftist.